Hello everyone, welcome to Senior Pablo TV. Our topic for today is exponential function. Before watching this video, please make sure that you watch our inverse function. Just click the link in our card, then it will direct you in that video. And of course, please do not use this as your instructional materials in your online class. Because we have different approach here in teaching in secular or in classroom setup. Exponential function. Let us define what is exponential function. Exponential function is, can be written as function of x is equal to b raised to x. In this case, b will be our base and x is our exponent. Where b is greater than 0 and x is any real number. Okay, when we say real number, it can be decimal, fraction, or whole numbers. Since we are dealing with the exponential function, let's have a short recall about the laws of exponent. In this lesson, we will be using two laws of exponent. The first one is the zero exponent. When we say zero exponent, if n is not equal to 0, then n raised to 0 is equal to 1. That means if we have 5 raised to 0, that is equal to 1. 10 raised to 0 is equal to 1. Except for 0 raised to 0. Because that will give us undefined. Okay? The second one is the negative exponent if you have a raised to negative n that is equal to 1 over a raised to n let's say we have 5 raised to negative 1 that is equal to 1 over 5 raised to 1 or simply one fifth. Other example, if we have three raised to negative two, that is equal to one over three squared. One over our negative sign will become positive. And let us simplify that is one over three squared. That is 9. Okay. 1 over 9. 3 raised to negative 2 is equal to 1 over 9. Okay. That is our laws of exponent. And now let's have the characteristics or the properties of exponential function and, it, and its graph. This is very important to know the properties and characteristics of exponential function to check whether you are in the wrong process of solving our function. Our first property, oh, we have our condition. Let f of x is equal to b raised to x, wherein b must be greater than 1, and b must not be equal to 1. Our first property is the domain is the set of real numbers. When we say domain, it is the possible values for x. That is our domain. Next, the range is the set of positive real numbers. So range are the possible values for y. So if we're going to examine in our graph and apply our second characteristic, 
we will notice that the range is the positive or real number. So our graph is on the first and second quadrant, on the upper part of our Cartesian plane. If b is greater than 1, the function is an increasing exponential function. So increasing, it's going up if b is greater than 1. If b or the base is greater than 0 but less than 1, the function is decreasing exponential function, going down. Okay, then number 4, the function passes through the point 0, 1. Why? Because if we have f of 0, that is equal to b raised to 0, and b raised to 0, or n raised to 0 is equal to 1. And our last property, or the graph, the graph approach but not reach the x-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. So it will go closer and closer to x-axis, but it will never touch the x-axis. They will never meet. Okay, to better understand these properties, let's apply using the problem here y is equal to 2 raised to x plus 3. We're going to find first our table of values. And of course, after getting the table of values, let us graph. The technique is we need to apply our laws of exponent. So the given is y is equal to 2 raised to x plus 1. So we have x and y. Technique, let us use the zero exponent. Let us assign the values for x. Then our technique is the exponent must be equal to 0. So apply our zero exponent. So to make our exponent, to make our exponent x plus 3 is equal to 0, let us find for x. So if we use addition property, subtract negative 3, subtract negative 3, that will become negative 3. Or that process is transposition method if you were in your high school. But if you will study mathematics, there is no transposition in math. So that is the addition property of equality. Take note of that. Okay, so if x is negative 3, let us solve y is equal to 2 raised to negative 3 plus 3. This will become 2, negative 3 plus 3, this will become 0. And 2 raised to 0, that will become 1. So, if x is negative 3, if x is negative 3, okay, let's write negative 3 here. Our y will become... 1. Next, let us extend one more. Extend one more. Okay. X and Y. Since we have negative 3, so on the right side of negative 3, we have negative 2, negative 1, then 0. Then we have negative 4, negative 5. Oh, we can continue if you want. So negative 3, let us find negative 2. y is equal to 2 raised to negative 2 
plus 3. That will give us, copy the base, 2, negative 2 plus 3, that is positive 1. 2 raised to 1, that is 2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if x is negative 2, our y is... If x is negative 2, our y is 2. I will write 2 here. Okay, next. If you want negative 4, negative 1, that's okay. So let's start with negative 1. So y is equal to 2 raised to negative 1 for x plus 3. So this will become 2 raised to negative 1 plus 3, that is positive 2. 2 is square, that is 2 times 2, will give us 4. So if x is negative 2, a uh, negative 1, y is 4. Negative 1, y is 4. And for 0, y is equal to 2 raised to x, let's get 0, plus 3, y is equal to 2, 0 plus 3, that is 3. And now we have 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 times 2, that is So, 8. And, if you have negative 4, y is equal to 2 raised to negative 4 plus 3. So, 2, negative 4 plus 3, that is negative 1. Applying our negative exponent, so we have 2 or 1 over 2 raised to 1. So that is 1 over 2, 1 half. So if we have x for negative 4, that is 1 half. And last one, if negative 5, I will erase this. So y is equal to 2 raised to negative 5 plus 3. This will give us 2 raised to negative 2. Negative exponent, that is 1 over 2 raised to 2, 1 over 4. Okay. 1 fourth. 1 over 4. If you notice, to check, our fifth property, it will not reach the x-axis. So if we're going to continue negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, the volume will be decreasing, but it will never meet our x-axis because that is our horizontal asymptote. So if we're going to graph this, we have 0, negative 8, so 0, then a 0, positive 8, 0, then going up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Then negative 1, 4, negative 1, then going up. Ah, this is the positive numbers. Positive. Again, let us repeat. Positive 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Negative 1, positive 4. Negative 1, going to positive 4. Negative 2, 
going to positive 2. Negative 3 going to 1. Negative 3, 1. Negative 4, then 1 half, 1 half. Then negative 5, 1 4. Okay, so this is now our graph. It will approach x-axis, but it will not reach our x-axis. It will just go closer and closer, but they will never go. So that is our exponential function. And of course, it, uh, the properties and its graph. So I'm so sorry for because we have a small font here for our letters. And just uh, try to check in your modules or in your books to better understand or to visualize our uh, words here. Okay, once again, thank you for watching Senior Pablo TV and I hope you enjoy this exponential function.